Just take a look around. Do you see all the green, lush plants out in the landscape? That's food and fiber we all depend on to survive. However, these plants would not be here if not for one thing, dirt. Hi, my name is Roger Windhorn. I'm a soil scientist with the Department of Agriculture. And we're gonna talk just a little bit, just a few minutes about what good material this is, why it is what it is, and then also a little bit about why you should know your dirt. Soil comes in many different colors. We have dark colors, we have light colors, we even have orange colors. We have a lot of different colors with each one representing the composition of the soil, such as mineral, organic matter, and then the moisture content of the soil. Soil comes in many different forms too. The sandy beach we walk on or play in is one form of soil. We make pottery, bricks, and other household items from clay, which is another form of soil. And then, of course, we grow our plants that produce our food and fiber in silt, which is still another form of soil. So we have sand, silt, and clay that make up our soil, and it doesn't matter where you live, these are the components that make up all soil. We see the soil every day in our yards, in our parks, in our farm field, but let's take a look and see how much we actually have. So we're going to talk a little bit about soil and water today. And what I want us to do is think of this apple as our planet Earth. Does that work? All right. And I've already cut it into four different pieces. So I have a fourth of an apple and three quarters of an apple here, right? What do you think this three quarters of an apple represents? It represents the water on Earth, doesn't it? Yep. So all of this is the, the, our water on Earth. And this is all we have for land. So let's think about our land here for a minute, okay? I'm going to cut this in half. Now we have two parts. Now this part is going to be the part that's our mountains and our deserts. And we have a lot of land that's covered in ice, don't we? Yep, so we can't grow food here, can we? So we'll set him aside. Now we have this one piece left. And I'm going to cut it into four. We have four pieces here. And out of this, four pieces, these three, we can't grow crops on. Maybe it's because it's too wet, or because it's too hot, or it's not fertile, or maybe it's because of our buildings and our parking lots. There's no land to grow food on, is there? So this is the only piece we have left. And if we're going to peel this 1 32nd of our apple this is what we have to grow all of our food on. Well, as you can see, we don't have an inexhaustible supply of the good soil. There are many ways all of us can protect what soil we have, regardless of whether you live in the city or on a farm. One major threat to soil quality is erosion, erosion by wind and water. Wind can be very harmful for soil. Remember the dust bowl days? That was the result of soil left unprotected against the elements. When the ground is dry and the wind blows, you will see the topsoil being picked up and blown away. Not only are we losing good productive soil, but it can also cause air pollution. We all know that water can be very destructive if not contained. A good rainstorm can carry soil off the fields and yards and into our streams and rivers, taking the organic matter and the beneficial soil critters that we depend on with it. It can also clog our waterways, causing floods downstream, and it doesn't have to be a heavy rain to cause this destruction. Protection from these elements is the secret to keeping our soil healthy and productive. Here's how that works. When you look out across the countryside, you may notice some fields are planted on sloping land, not up and down the slope, but in rows on different levels of flat areas with grassy slopes that resemble stairs. These stairs are called terraces, and they allow water to flow off gently and soak into the ground. By slowing the water flow, terraces protect the soil from water erosion. Another way to protect the soil is dependent on how crops are planted. 
For instance, instead of plowing the fields and exposing the soil to the elements, there is special tillage equipment that is available that barely disturbs the soil. This is called conservation tillage and leaves residue from the previous plant cover to cover the soil. The residue becomes mulch that protects the soil from both the wind and the rain. It also helps maintain moisture and moderate the temperature of the ground. All this is good for growing our food and fiber. In the city, we might consider using these same practices, but at a smaller scale. When we landscape our yards, we want them to be attractive and useful, and we want to protect the soil so the plants will grow. Sometimes we find challenges such as steep slopes. We can use the same principles as on the farm. If there's a hill in the yard where we want to plant a flower or a vegetable garden, consider terracing the area. This will make gardening possible and stop erosion of your property. Terraces can also create a unique look and provide easy access to plants. Using mulch on the garden is much like leaving residue on the field. Mulch helps protect the soil from drying out and blowing away. It holds the moisture in so you have less watering to do and mulch regulates the ground temperature for plant growth. So, we've seen our soil in a variety of ways. We've seen some really good parts about our soil, the critters that are in the soil, the, how productive it is, but we've also seen that our soil is not inexhaustible. The best thing you can do to manage your soil, whether you're in the city or out on the farm, is to know your dirt.